Hey, what's up you guys? It's Caboose bringing you another Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League video and today what I got for you guys here is going to be my official breakdown of this trailer here, the one that we got during DC Fandom. Before we jump into everything, if you enjoyed DC Fandom and you enjoyed the reveals that we got for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, well then hit that thumbs up button. It would show your support and I would really appreciate it and be a fun way for you guys to share your excitement with me. If you're new here and you want to be kept up to date on all things Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, well then I got you covered on the news and updates for this game, reactions to future trailers that we'll get, gameplay when the game does launch in 2022, and so much more. If that sounds like a good deal, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be immediately notified when a video goes live. Lastly, reminding you guys that I'm sponsored by Gamer Advantage. You can grab yourselves these blue light glasses like the ones that I'm wearing right now or any of the other pairs that they have available. Just head to that link in the description box below and get yourselves a pair. They are the best blue light blockers in the business. You can use code Caboose at checkout for 10% off your order. And with all that being said, Let's jump into my breakdown. Okay, so the trailer opens up recreating this iconic moment, of course, the opening shot of Batman Arkham Asylum. This is a nice way for Roxana to pay homage to their beginnings in the Arkhamverse, leading in to the next game in their Arkham universe. And of course, as well, these characters, the Suicide Squad, they're all in Arkham Asylum, and that's where they're being recruited. They're wearing the Arkham Asylum jumpsuit. We can see them reference the fact that, yes, the characters have these chips in their heads. They can be controlled then they're being electrocuted here this is a nice little gag that we see repeated throughout the trailer for this game i also just love this shot here on the ground with the giant arkham logo rocksteady clearly wants everybody to know that yes this game is within the arkhamverse and as well they're the guys who made those batman arkham games that are so beloved then we see our characters jump out of this destroyed train and not sure what happened or how it was derailed and they run into and meet the character of gizmo but not before they get suited up and ready to go forming their team as the Suicide Squad. We can also see little glimpses actually of some of the tech that Gizmo is going to be providing each character in the Suicide Squad. King Shark here puts on the Riddler's hat. I love that. I think this would be a great accessory for King Shark to have for the whole game. This dude is so wholesome. Why are they making King Shark so wholesome in all DC media right now? I just want to give the guy a hug. We get a quick moment here of Captain Boomerang tossing a boomerang and then potentially showcasing his powers, his abilities within Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I've speculated for a while now that he's going to essentially be a speedster and it looks like he's basically going to be one. I'm assuming the boomerang and the abilities that he can do here are a part of the tech that Gizmo's going to provide the Suicide Squad, but you can see he tosses the boomerang and then he can move extremely quick probably not as fast as the flash but pretty damn fast and there's the man that i've been talking about this is gizmo he is a teen titan supervillain, and in the comics he's kind of a tech expert so i'm guessing his role in suicide squad kill the justice league is essentially going to be the team's architect making their weaponry giving them the gadgets that they're going to need to take on the justice league and then we can see that the squad busts out of wherever they're in and they can see everything that's going down in metropolis brainiac's ship they're looking insanely cool i am very excited to see what brainiac's design is going to be like and what it's going to be like going up against him because i assume that brainiac's probably going to be like the final final boss for this game obviously the entire suicide squad is creeped out about what's going on or they're just blown away we see some brainiac minions captain boomerang's pissed off at amanda waller and if we rewind for just a moment we can see in the streets of metropolis being chased right now by one of these weird brainiac aliens the suicide squad in the background there but in the far background we see some sort of poster for the justice league some hall of justice thing it says hall of justice above it then i see the word justice league or the words justice league and then something junior below it so maybe this has to do with some recruiting program maybe maybe it's a fun little like kids camp thing where you get to visit the hall of justice i don't know and then to the right there's a nice little cardboard cutout of the flash and some justice league balloons i'm going to assume these are collectibles in the game and there's things that you can just like destroy in the city that act as collectibles that you can just work towards an achievement or something like that in suicide squad kill the justice league we get a great shot of the suicide squad here and let me just say although i am disappointed that we didn't get any gameplay i'm really glad that from what i can tell everything that they showed for this trailer 
is in game. It's all cutscenes, but it's in game. It's what we're going to see with our own eyes when we get our hands on the game at some point in 2022. And as well, if you look right there on Harley Quinn's arm, I believe that is a tattoo that is honoring Poison Ivy. We know that this game takes place within the Arkhamverse, and if it does take place after Arkham Knight, that may be her way of honoring a friend after her death. That being said, Poison Ivy might not actually be dead, but we'll get to that later. That's a dead guy. I don't know what happened to him. He's turned to sand, it looks like, or dust. I'm not sure what's going on there, but he's probably not going to be okay. And then again, we get some shots here of the Brainiac minions running through the streets of Metropolis, and the city looks lively, although... I mean, there's a, there's a dead, there's literally a dead guy here, but it looks very different. This is a new vision from Rocksteady that's not going to be that same old Gotham City that we've gotten from them through their last three games. You know, I say that just as the next shot is of some rainfall pouring down on the Suicide Squad, looking very Arkham Knight-esque. And then a sword goes through this giant Brainiac minion, and that's actually the sword of Wonder Woman. You can see for just a brief moment that that is Wonder Woman behind the giant monster. So I'm almost 99% sure. And I mean, the sword itself looks very similar to that of the weaponry that Wonder Woman would have. The next shot though is huge. This here is the Hall of Justice. The Suicide Squad is standing in the Hall of Justice and behind them is the statues of what is probably the main Justice League lineup in this game. From left to right, we have Jon Stewart, Green Lantern. We have Wonder Woman. Obviously in the center, that's Superman. He's the leader of the Justice League. Then next to him is Batman. That is a Batman statue. And that statue looks very reminiscent of the suit that Batman wears in Arkham Knight. So this may confirm that Batman's gonna show up in the game, and it may confirm as well that the timeline in which Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League takes place in the Arkhamverse is post Arkham Knight. Then of course on the end there, that is the Flash. Of course you can't have any superhero or super villain media in this case without some slow motion walking. Then we see Superman in the following shot here shooting somebody with his laser eyes looking badass as hell. And this design for Superman's suit is next to perfect. It might even just be straight up perfect. And it makes me cross my fingers so hard that whatever follows Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is just a straight up Justice League game from Rocksteady. I really hope that they plan to make something like that because it would be amazing. These designs cannot go to waste. I don't want to kill the Justice League. I know it's the title of the game, but please, Rocksteady, don't, don't make me kill these guys. Do not let me get, do not let the only time I get to see these crazy good designs for the Justice League be when I have to kill these guys, okay? Speaking of insanely good designs, the Flash is my favorite superhero of all time. Consider this my seal of approval that Rocksteady nailed his look in this game. Love the armor there, love the flash symbol. I do wish that the flash symbol popped off the chest and was separate to it, similar to how we see Superman's symbol on his suit. But besides that, it is perfect. I also think the goggles is a really good look for the flash and it actually is practical for what his powers are. The dude's running insanely fast. He doesn't wanna get dust or a fly going into his eye or something like that. It hurt. And this moment here is interesting because it looks like it's a moment where the, the Suicide Squad is introduced to the Flash and he's kind of messing with them, running around in circles. Then following that is a first look at our boy Jon Stewart Green Lantern. Another incredible design for a Justice League member in the game. I, I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. And he's making steps. He's creating steps to have a menacing entrance against the Suicide Squad. That's how you utilize a power set for a character that's gone bad. We cut back again to that moment with the Flash. And like I said, he's messing with the Suicide Squad here, running circles around them, smiling and having a good time. But you can clearly tell that he's got that weird veiny look around his face, similar to what we saw going around Superman's eyes in the reveal trailer. And you'll also see that again later in this trailer. These characters, the Justice League, are almost 100% under the influence of Brainiac's mind control, and that's what's turned them evil. And then there she is, Wonder Woman, another member of the Justice League showing up in this trailer. And I'm assuming as well that they are in the Hall of Justice there. You see Green Lantern's logo to her left. 
Then right behind her is her logo as well as her shield. So again, I'm guessing this is the Hall of Justice that they're inside and they're shooting at Wonder Woman. And actually what's interesting to point out is that Wonder Woman doesn't have that veiny look the same as the other Justice League members. I actually think that she isn't under Brainiac's mind control and might be one of the Justice League members that helps the Suicide Squad take down the Justice League or at least try and get them to snap out of it and then inevitably take down Brainiac. You can see the Justice League logo right above me there and Deadshot's been kind of stuck to a wall here from Wonder Woman tossing one of her swords at him and they're trying to shoot at her maybe because they assume that she's under mind control but she's not actually and then in her perspective well it's the Suicide Squad they're a bunch of villains so she's trying to take them down as well we get a quick glimpse of the Suicide Squad behold as Superman zooms off in the air there or at least we assume that that's Superman that could be a ship of some kind I'm not entirely sure but I'm going to go with a safe bet in that that is Superman. And the moment that followed turned a lot of heads. Right there, it looks like some kind of Batmobile. Now, I don't think this is actually Batman's Batmobile. I believe, because if you look really closely at this moment right here, through the windshield, that looks like it's Gizmo. My guess here is that Gizmo has kind of made his own Batmobile, maybe as a fan or something. He created his own little Batmobile here, because obviously... It doesn't look as good as the Batmobile did in Arkham Knight. Now, who is this? Someone's picking up a gun. They hold it up to Harley's head. And that gauntlet, those gloves, it just, it doesn't match up with any of the Justice League members we've seen in this trailer so far. Could that be your boy Batman? I don't know, but... I'm starting to think it might be. Following this, we get a nice moment of John Stewart Green Lantern just unleashing hell on the Suicide Squad as they try to fight back. Again, more shots of the Suicide Squad fighting Wonder Woman. You saw their Captain Boomerang was held up by her lasso. Then right there, oh man, look at the Superman suit. I love the design here. I love the intricacies. I love what they're doing with the detail, the S, the vibrance. And then again, you can see clearly around his eyes is that veiny look he is definitely under the influence of brainiac's mind control and you can especially tell with the purple glow in his eyes in the next shot as we go into a close-up so something's going on with the justice league here because of brainiac and we're gonna have to uncover that mystery when we get our hands on the game in 2022 another shot here of the squad in a rainy metropolis given those arkham knight vibes once again which i thought was great then there's a moment where one of the tentacles from brainiac's ship seems to have eyed the suicide squad and it's about to go after them i don't know how they're gonna plan to stop that but we'll have to wait and see and then again a look at the flash's design and I, I genuinely, listen, I know everybody has their own opinions and, and I understand that everyone's allowed and entitled to that, but I honestly think you're crazy if you think this design is bad. I I think you've, you've lost it. We then get a really interesting shot here of Harley doing a little flip off of some sort of flying machine. And we actually see that machine earlier in the trailer. This is once again, one of Gizmo's gadgets. And I believe as well, this is how Harley is going to be able to traverse around Metropolis. She maybe has access to this thing wherever she goes and she can ride it and fly around on it or potentially grapple it to get higher up onto skyscrapers in Metropolis. That's a really fun, innovative idea to give a character that can't really move around too much an opportunity to get some nice verticality and traversal. So pretty much to go over it, we have a jetpack with Deadshot. We have King Shark who can kind of jump leaps and bounds. We have the speed abilities with Captain Boomerang. And then Harley Quinn potentially has some sort of machine created by Gizmo to fly around with and to grapple at any time she chooses. And let me just say once again, I, I can't stress enough how good this game looks. For everything to be real time, for all these cutscenes to be how the game is going to look when we get our hands on it, or maybe it's going to look even better. That's just unreal. And now let me rewind because this dude here, he, uh, he lost his head. And for a sec, I thought that this was Lex Luthor. At least I'm assuming it could be. We see that they are in LexCorp. The signs are right there behind this mysterious character. And I thought for a second that maybe this was Lex Luthor and they were basing the design off of the Superman birthright comic books, similar to what they did with Jesse Eisenberg and Batman v Superman. The only thing is, 
I don't think it's Lex Luthor. I would be, I would find it extremely hard to believe that they would kill off Lex Luthor in the trailer for this game. That'd be a massive spoiler a full year ahead of time. Whoever it is, the, the squad is not happy with him <laughs> for some reason. So maybe he's just some scientist who works in LexCorp. I'm not sure why they kill him. I'm not sure why Amanda Waller wanted him dead, but that happened. Now, I'm just gonna hope and pray that this is cut weird and this is not a look at the Flash dying because please, please Rocksteady, this design is too good. Please do not kill off the Flash. I'm, I'm literally, I'm begging. I'm literally begging you not to kill the Flash in this game. I'm begging. And then, yeah, we see this mysterious character, whoever it is, kind of bites the dust, gets his head blown off. And yeah, this game's gonna be gory. This game's gonna have quite a bit of blood. I think it's safe to assume it's gonna be rated M for mature. Following this though is a really interesting moment, which makes me question what's going on within the story of the Arkhamverse. Cause right there, that looks like it is Poison Ivy's vines, or at least this is something of the control of Poison Ivy. A giant plant erupts from the ground and then some vines grab the entire squad and lift them up. Could Poison Ivy maybe have been resurrected in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? Or does this take place before Arkham Knight? I feel like it doesn't, as it would be weird not to reference any of the events of this game within the Arkham franchise. And at the same time as well, if Superman just swooped in and helped out Batman for two seconds, all of Batman's problems would have been resolved in Batman Arkham Knight without a hitch. We get a shot of the Flash spitting out some coffee. Might've been a little too hot for him. Another couple of shots of the squad themselves looking fantastic. And then here, we actually get a battle between Wonder Woman and Superman to close out the trailer. And I think this moment actually supports my theory about Wonder Woman not being under the mind control from Brainiac. Because we can see here, once again, when she's on top of Superman after tackling him to the ground from the air and they just make that massive impact, she doesn't have that veiny look on her face, similar to what we saw with The Flash, with Superman throughout the trailer. So she's not under Brainiac's control, and she's probably going to be the only Justice League member who is in that position and has to help the Suicide Squad to either hold off the Justice League until they can figure out how to get them off Brainiac's mind control, or maybe help them kill the Justice League. I don't think that's going to happen, though. I genuinely do not believe we're going to have to kill the Justice League. I think that's the title of the game because that's the premise but we're not going to actually execute them. Superman takes a kick to Wonder Woman, sends her flying. There's all this debris and there's this close up of Superman with the purple eyes, with that veiny look, and she's holding on to his mouth. Wonder Woman is holding on to his mouth, potentially to stop him from using his freeze breath. But if it's not the freeze breath, well then it's the heat vision. So you better watch out Wonder Woman because the following shot is of him unleashing and she just narrowly dodges. But it looks like she's pretty nonchalant here. It almost looks like she's in control of this fight, which is badass as hell. I love it. I cannot wait to see some Justice League members duking it out in a Rocksteady game. That is so cool. Then right at the end here, we can actually see that Penguin, Cobblepot is in the game and potentially under control by Argus, by Amanda Waller. And they have a little gag here where they keep trying to tell Amanda Waller that Cobblepot's running away. So she just keeps electrocuting the guy. It's hilarious. I love the tone. Roxette's doing something completely different with Suicide Squad than from what we got from them through the entire Batman Arkham franchise. And I am here for it. So there you have it. My breakdown for the story trailer for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which comes out next year and the hype is real again i wish we got actual gameplay but this is how the game's gonna look these are the cutscenes. this is what we're gonna see with our own eyes when it launches in 2022 and it might look even better than this in 2022 that's just unbelievable that's a crazy concept to me and i just cannot wait with that said now I want to kick it to you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Is there anything that I missed in my breakdown? Was there anything you noticed in my breakdown that you didn't notice before? If so, hit that thumbs up button. It would show your support and I would really appreciate it. Sound off with your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm Caboose and you can click on screen to make your way to one of the other videos on the channel or you can click my logo to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Those links are going to be in the description. Drop a like if you enjoyed, leave a comment if you have an opinion and subscribe if you're new. See you guys later.